Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Dion Amade. As Ford High School Weekly is approaching its 100th episode, we thought it'd be a good idea to revisit some of the conversations we've had in the last two years. Well, welcome to Ford High School Weekly. From athletes to reps, to coaches to administrators, we've talked to them all. First up, we'll revisit some of the conversations we've had with the best high school football players in the state. You might see some of these guys on Saturday this fall. Let's start off with Jinx Trojan, Jalen Stanford, on how he earned the nickname Zeus. I, I noticed the nickname Zeus. How, tell, tell the people how you got that nickname and what's it all about. Uh, so th- that just happened this uh, last year at track. So we just running track and I'm just running and our coach is like, oh, yeah, he is fast. We're going to call him Zeus. And ever since then, I just stuck with it and I liked it. Coach Isham, that's the coach who gave it to me. <laughs> so is so he didn't even tell you, like, why Zeus? I mean, because isn't Zeus supposed uh, to be like one of the strongest gods or something like that? Why, why Zeus? I, I, I don't know. I guess just the hair and just the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we got on here, we were joking with your dad about, you know, eating and and, and you making sure you stay, you maintain your weight and everything. So I got to ask you, what's your favorite dinner? Uh, it's definitely my mom's chicken Alfredo, man. I love eating it. I love it when she cooks it. She knows that I love it. So every time she cooks it, she's a, I'm the first one she calls to come get their plate. And, you know, uh, I drink my protein after practice, after I lift, all that, to make sure I maintain my weight. So, you know, when I get to OSU, I kind of have a head start, you know. So that's how I maintain my weight, you know, and my favorite dish. <laughs> well, I'm telling you right now, you're going to love that training table, but it's nothing like mom's cooking. I mean, chicken Alfredo, Man. I don't know if they can touch that. <laughs> what do you love about the game? As far as it, if it's not a position, then what's the thing that you really like about playing football? Uh, So I like the fun like you can have. Like there's guys that like go out there and they're grunting and, and just want to like hit somebody like that some people do it for like to get their anger out and stuff but i kind of think of it as like having fun and people have heart and like you can say you have heart and other things but like i'm not downing on art or anything like people like i love art and i'll put my heart into art and put it on paper right but like you can see it through that but not the same way you can see it through football and expressions and emotions and physical uh appearances now, Gavin, I mean, I've seen you play. It, it, it's phenomenal. But I, 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 I start to wonder, why did you – and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but why did you start playing football from the very beginning? Well, it's just – it's been in my family for as long as I can remember. Uh, my grandpa played middle linebacker at Oklahoma State. My dad was tied into Oklahoma. Um, it's just – it's you could say it's in my blood, and I just want to fulfill – I just want to follow their footsteps and, and play football. You kind of having that family lineage, is there any kind of pressure playing football in the state of Oklahoma, with knowing that you, who your dad is and how big he was at Oklahoma, and then you said your grandpa uh, played at Oklahoma State. What, what, is there any pressure behind it? Maybe a little bit. Uh, probably maybe a little bit, but, you know, in the end, I just, I just got to play. You already mentioned your dad, and I, I, I know he's on the staff over there at Heritage Hall. So, how is it playing for your dad? Um, it's cool. It's for it's cool for sure. Uh, you know, you got it's cool to be coached by him, just because you've grown up with him in your whole life. So, if some things don't make sense, and then if he says something else, and it, it'll make more sense. Um, and then there's always like it's like tough love. You'll get yelled at, but you know he. He still loves you. He wants you to succeed. So it is pretty cool. You decided early on this year to make your commitment to the University of Oklahoma to play safety over there in Norman. What made you, you know, kind of come to that decision and say, you know what, I, I, I appreciate the recruiting process, but I already know where I'm going to go. Um, Probably just talking to, fo- like, talking to my family and friends. And then Coach Grinch and Coach Manning, like, when I went up there to work out and got my offer, it just everything just felt like home. Talking to Pat Fields, talking to Trouble, talking to DJ Graham, like everything just felt like home. 
even before, even on my official visit, it just felt like home and everything just felt right. Like I was talking to my mom about it, having dreams about it. And then I just pulled the trigger after the, I got off the phone with Coach Manning, like uh, July uh, 1st. And I just, I talked to my mom for like 30 minutes, called him back and told him I was ready to be a sooner. Speaking of recruiting, it seems like not only is your recruiting closed, but you're also helping doing a little recruiting yourself. What's the what's the story behind that? It seems like you're trying to get all your friends and and all your the guys that are high on the list there to, to come to Oklahoma with you. Uh, I'm just trying to win a national championship or even a Big 12 championship. So if I got to go out there and recruit, I'm going to do my thing to recruit. Best recruiter in Oklahoma right now. That's what, I'll call <laughs> myself. That's what, that's what Twitter calls me too, so. He comes in with the shirt and me being a former being an alum, I'm pretty happy about the news. So you recently announced that you're going to be going to Oklahoma State University. My man had to come down to that decision. Um, well, I mean, it was just a lot of uh, just thinking and uh, just talking to my family about it. And, um, you know, once I knew I was ready to, um, you know, commit, which is pretty early for some people. But, I mean, when you know the time is right, you know the time is right. So, I mean, I knew the time was right after, you know, talking to my family, uh, talking to Coach Dunn and the staff at OSU. So, I mean, I just I just kind of made that move. That's one of the questions that I was going to ask for you. I mean, let's be honest, with you being in the situation that you are, being, you know, four-star, five-star recruit, schools coming out of the woodworks you know all season long offering you and, and making sure that they know that you know that they're very interested in, for you to announce that you're gonna you know make your decision this early was a surprise to a lot of people especially in the state of oklahoma so why announce so early well i mean as i said before you know i just kind of thought about it and uh you know i called coach dunn probably a month before I even uh, committed, you know, I talked to my mom about that. And um, just for me right now, uh, even and even, you know, further down the road, I just think, you know, it's the best school for me, you know, academically and athletically. And, um, you know, I, I love the staff, you know, I've been around OSU since I was, uh, could barely walk. So, I mean, I, I talked to Coach Dunn and, you know, after, after that talk, I mean, it just kind of persuaded me to, you know, just go ahead and commit instead of, you know, waiting for other schools to come. You know, if you're confident and you don't have any doubt that, you know, even if other schools come after you, you're still going to go to that school. You might as well just um, go ahead and commit, you know, not waste anyone's time or not waste your time. Up next, we'll talk to some basketball players. What's Lacey Steele's favorite movie? Or who's David Castillo's top five? Find out when Ford High School Weekly returns. Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue, it's Boomer Q. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're revisiting some of the past conversations with some major hoopers in the state of Oklahoma. Let's start off with the number one point guard in the class of 2024, David Castillo, talking about his top five musical artists. All right, well, I got you know I gotta ask who who's the artist that you're listening to nowadays. Uh, uh, so I can give you my top five. I, okay, um, sure. I put up the graphics, <laughs> baby. Top five. Uh, here we go from David. Let's get it. Uh, so top one, top one's got to be Yeet. Uh, he's a he's a new rapper, um, kind of up tempo. Um, number two right now is probably Drake. Uh, you okay, know, okay. Drake has always got to be in the top top five somewhere. Um, number three. Number three has got to be Future, like his new his new album. Uh, you know, I've I've listened to Future in the past, but his new album is really, really hit. Um, number four, I got to add an R and B rapper, uh, Bryson Tiller. Okay, uh, I listen to him. Yep. <laughs> and uh, number five, um, it, it's a it's a battle. Um, it's a battle between Lil Durk and. Uh, Playboy Cardi. I see that. See him back there. So go ahead and tell me your favorite pair of shoes that you own right now. Um, uh, I'd say I got some UIBL, some new shoes that got they came in. Um, they're over there. I don't know 100 what they're called, but they're pretty sweet. And then I have some nice uh, Jordan One lows that I like. Go ahead and grab them, bro. Let me see. <laughs> you got Tom. 
it's these right here. So, okay, this is what BYBL got us. I haven't, I couldn't wear them during the season, um, just because the rules we had to wear white shoes. Our team had to wear white shoes, so but uh, I'd say those they're pretty sweet and um, just you know, thankful to have them, honestly. And you also mentioned that Trey Young is, is your favorite player. What of his game do you seem to like that, that you know, kind of made him be your favorite player? He knows when to create and score for himself and when to create and score for his teammates. So so as far as your favorite player, I mean, Trey has, hasn't been in the league uh, for a long time. How, how early in his career did you start taking a liking to him, or was it just because he's an Oklahoma kid as well? I think it was his sophomore summer going into his junior year. So yeah, some around there, I started watching him a lot. And I really liked the game, so that's when it all started. What's your favorite food? Well, I say my favorite like meal is breakfast. Um, I love making breakfast. I love making eggs um, with avocado. That's my favorite thing. Um, but I really like eating chicken and rice before games, like for lunch. Um, I think that's a like really reliable meal that just helps me in my games later in the day. And I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not about the avocados. I, I just feel like they don't taste like anything to me. I mean, why do you, what's the thing with avocados for you? Why do you like them? Um, I think that the texture, I think they do taste good. I think they have flavor, um, but of course they taste a lot better with like salt and pepper and some hot sauce. Hot sauce helps for sure. Hey, hot sauce goes good on everything. <laughs> All right, now take your time, but you know the next question's got to be, what's your favorite movie right now? I mean, you got to think back into the Wayback Machine, something that you that you enjoy watching that, that puts a smile to your face. What movie would it be? Oh, that's a hard one. I say I'm gonna just give you one of my favorite movies, um, which is the Titanic. I really like that movie. Um, I wouldn't say that's like a recent favorite, but it's definitely one of my all time favorite. Um, could always watch it whenever it's on. It's just a good movie. I'm still not sure about avocados, but I am sure that Lacey and her teammates at Edmund North went on to win the 6A Girls State Championship. Coming up on Ford High School Weekly, we have more state champions straight ahead. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. During the 21-22 school year, we were able to talk to several state championship winning athletes. We were there when Bixby's Preston Solomon hauled in three touchdown catches in Bixby's win over Deer Creek, and we caught up with Jinx head coach Keith Riggs after their recent title as well. That was a lot of touchdowns today, wasn't it? Yeah, it felt amazing. I mean, I knew I was going to get one for sure, but uh, I was definitely not expecting three. So uh, so what was in the game plan there? Did you see something this week or in your preparations that knew that you can attack the secondary, or was it just, you know, somebody's number was going to get called and it was yours? Uh, I mean, the coaches do a good job of putting the right players in the right positions. And uh, I give all credit to Coach Schneider. He's amazing. Uh, Offensive coordinator, he put me in the great spots, one-on-one -on -one coverage, uh, like just really amazing spots to make plays for my athletic ability. So, uh, so how does the state championship count, like kind of rank up to the other ones? Uh, it's definitely my best one. Last year sucked. I played terrible, and uh, it feels really good to come out here and uh, <laughs> prove to the people that uh, I can do what I can do. We, we all know the, the Trojans went ahead and, and got that gold ball this year. How excited were you to, to, to get the year, you know, kind of over with and, and go ahead and ca capture another gold ball and put it in the trophy case? Well, it, it's such a rush of emotions uh, coming down to the end of a game. Um, all the works that's put in, you know, you really you start working on the season in January. This time, you know, last year we started – uh, working on the 2021 campaign. And so to see all of that hard work, um, all of the sacrifices, um, all of the things that went into the season that our kids put in, our coaches put in, uh, it's just, it's indescribable. The Edmund North Husky girls and boys team swept 6A basketball championships this spring. 
Next, let's hear from one of those stars from the Edmund North boys basketball team, Dylan Worley. Guys, reached the ultimate goal this year of hoisting that gold ball, but summarize the season for me if, if you can. How did things go at the beginning? How were they towards the towards the end? And how did it kind of finish off? I mean, at the beginning of the season, we were all, you know, we lost 11 seniors, 10, 11 seniors. And uh, we were really, I, I mean, I was nervous for the season because I wasn't sure I was going to go, having four sophomores start throughout the entire year in one senior. So, I mean, I really wasn't sure at the start of the year how I was going to go. And we had ups and downs throughout the whole entire season, but the more we played, the more I realized how good we actually were. And then, obviously, to, I mean, towards the end of the season, we won we won six in a row, lost one, won six in a row, lost one, and then won six and one state. So, I mean, obviously, you could see as we went through the season how much better we got as a team. The Tulsa Memorial Chargers added another gold ball this year, and we talked to star point guard Ty Frierson about what sets Memorial apart. How is the basketball tradition over there, and, and what sets you guys apart? Uh, you like what sets us apart, like from other other uh, teams? Yeah. Uh, we all we play together. It's like because like if you come in here, you know you're gonna play together. Like you, it's all it's like a brotherhood. You know, it's like it's not no single person. It's like it's all us, it's all together. It's we. So how do they kind of implement that when y'all are going to it as a, as freshmen and coming into the program? How do how do you get taught that in in a in a very specific way? Okay, it's like uh, oh my upper the upperclassmen and stuff like you can see like Caleb when I had Caleb and Keelan here they just you just look up to the seniors so you just see they they all about team first so and all the other all the alumni coming back and. See it in all that's a lot of alumni come back for scrimmages. They just talk about how the team, they talk about how they're the best team and stuff. So I'll just we try to be the best team here right now. Up next, we'll talk to the people that you won't see playing on the field, but you will see them in the stadiums and in the arena when Ford High School Weekly returns. Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue. It's Boomer Q. Welcome back. Here at Ford High School Weekly, we're champions of high school sports. But we don't just talk to the players. Let's talk to some band directors and maybe even the guy in charge himself, David Jackson. But first, let's talk to football ref Ethan Rowland about his craziest heckle. I mean, at, at, for, for all the stuff that you guys have to endure, what's the funniest thing maybe a coach or a fan might have said to you while you were officiating a game? Well, I, I've heard a bunch. So um, I'll tell you this. So what I always say to a, a fan, if there's a fan there and, you know, we're joking around before the game or something, I always say, say something creative because I've heard it all. If you come up with something new, that's great. But probably the funniest thing I've heard, I, I, we were at uh, we were at Coweta, actually. I had a game at Coweta. And uh, we had a foul. I don't remember what it was. And um, um, I'm, I'm not in good a shape, Dion, as I used to be. Uh, when I played football, I, obviously. I mean, you're in great shape, but I'm not. And so I'm, we, we announced, and I'm announcing the foul. You know, it's a holding. I'm announcing holding on the offense. And it's deadly quiet. But I hear a person in the stands yell out, you must like cheeseburgers because I'm a little overweight. <laughs> so I just laughed and, and moved on. And uh, but yeah, I do like cheeseburgers, but- uh, Who doesn't like cheeseburgers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't forget about the marching band performance on Friday nights. We spoke with Edward Hudson Jr., the director of the Spirit of West marching band about what it means to be in band. What, what kind of things would people not know about as far as being physically tasking and, and being in a band? I think it's really great that you said that, you know, I think of it like this, from the waist down, the student has to be an athlete. From the waist up, the student has to be a musician. And so if you think about it, we have students moving at fast tempos across the field, doing all types of dance moves while maintaining a good tone and playing with good quality sound, which can take a lot 
out of a student, you know? So there's a lot of preparation and physical training as well, you know? We do stretches every morning. We have a stretch block and a routine that the kids get acclimated to. We run to keep them conditioned. We have to be very careful about that Oklahoma heat. You know, every 20 minutes we're getting our students in to get them hydrated and we're monitoring them through these, you know, Oklahoma summers. You guys know how, how hot it can get. So we just have to make sure and maintain that, you know, it's just as an athletic uh, opportunity, just as other sports. OSSAA Executive Director David Jackson is spotted all over high school events. But did you know he was one of 12 children? <laughs> Neither did I. Now let's go all the way back. So you're one of 11 kids? Uh, I'm, I'm the 11th of 12. Wow. So you so so you're so you thought you were going to be the youngest and then they had another <laughs> one. <laughs> Absolutely. Didn't get to enjoy the spoils of being the, the youngest. Uh, uh, so I was just pretty much for a long time, the you know, the, the punching bag, the, you know, the little kid that everybody that all the family picked on. But uh, no, it, it was great uh, growing up in a, in a large family. You might also see a reporter or two at the game. We are always chatting with Prep Red Zone Michael Knight about recruiting and rankings, but we also remember when his baby Wyatt was born. Go ahead and tell Wyatt we, we're, we're waiting on him to make his debut here on, on Ford High School Weekly. It might happen in like 16 years, but we're, we'll, we'll, we'll wait on him. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I tweeted out. I was like, we got an early, uh, early favorite for the number one prospect in the 2040 class, I believe. He'll be. uh, so look, I'm biased, though. I'm biased. <laughs> you certainly are, man. Congratulations and uh, go have fun with the family. Thanks, man. Go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. Just like every week, only the best in Oklahoma make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you to all the guests that we've had the past two years. Until next time, I'm Dion Amade. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Rib Crib, smoking good stuff since 92.